We're going to get started on creating multiplayer environments in Unreal. Of course, on Tuesday, we saw how to launch an, a multiplayer using the, the three dots and setting your number of players to two, and then you can go to play as a listen server. And that gives you two players running on the same machine. Today we're going to, now, now the problem with this is if I put something into this environment, it's not reflected in other clients. But let's, let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go to content drawer. You should be following along. Come on. I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to give it my name. This will make it easier to turn things in for the class as we go forward. I'm going to go to be my, my personal folder. I'm going to go ahead and create another folder. And I'm going to call that character. And then I'm going to jump down here to third person. Go to blueprints. And then I'm going to grab this BP third person character and I want to move that to my characters folder. There's only one of them. I'm just going to drag it over to my character and tell it to move here. Okay. And as you might guess, we're going to start our work with BP third person character. Now this character is already fully made. We've got look around, we've got jump, we've got run. All the tools are already built into this blueprint. Let's go ahead and open that blueprint. We've got a blueprint here. I want to move it to our, there's only one instance of it. Yes. Now, if you were wanting to use Quinn instead of, or Manny instead of Quinn, currently I'm set at Quinn, you could go in, select your mesh from your third person character, and change that to any of the characters you wanted to change to, based upon your mesh. Right now, I'm on Quinn Simple, and you could change that to Manny Simple, or if you want the male demo. I'm going to stay with Quinn for now. And I want to be able, at, when we launch this, I'm going to dock this. When we launch our game currently, there's no way to tell a difference between the two of them. Right? Let's make it so that I could press a button and set the change the texture, or the, yeah, change the texture on the character that I am currently using. Okay, we're just going to go back to our blueprint. And I'm going to go up here a little bit, go in, scroll in a little bit. And we're just simply going to make a mesh change. I'm going to right click, Press the number one because I want to create a keyboard event for number one. And then we're going to make a slight change to the mesh. I'm going to drag mesh onto the screen and drag off of mesh and I'm going to say set material. And this will be based upon pressing the number one. And I want to change the mesh material on the character to anything else. Let's probably not stone. That's just going to look really weird. Let's go gold. That's all I've done. I've got my mesh. I've got the number one. And I've got my set material. Save, compile, let's go back to our level, and hit run. Now, 
in with me in the seam, if I press number one, the texture should change. It's yeah, it's I, I selected gold. Now I'm going to pull this over a little bit. I'm going to run it again. And you can see up here at the top, I've still got my character. I'm going to hit the, go into the scene again and press one. Notice how on your second screen, this change is not reflected. Because it has to be complicated. I, there, there's a simpler answer. <laughs> Why is it only being reflected on one of the clients? Correct. It's not running on the server. Right now, this code is limited to one client. Now, if I go over here to this other one, pressing Alt-Tab, if I press 1 on it, that second character also changes, but only inside that client. Right? Only Things are only happening in the client. Somehow, there must be a way to tell the server to update this to all clients, right? That makes sense. There ought to be a way to do that. Well, you're right. There is. I'm going to pause this. There is a way. I'm jumping back here to my BP third person. There is a way to pass this information to the server. And it's called a remote procedure call, or RPC. RPCs allow us to tell the computer where we want the instruction to run. Do we want it to run on the, the local client, or we do we want it to run on our server? And it doesn't matter whether we're running a listen server, or a server on Amazon, or Steam, or, or wherever the case might be, it tells it to run this code on the server it can be replicated. It can be replicated to all of the clients or it forces the information to be passed to the clients. To do that, we're going to create a custom event, custom event. And I'm going to add a custom event and I'm going to call it RPC underscore change material and I'm going to go ahead and put another underscore and tell one. Oh, it takes a very long time. It, okay, <laughs> and my system's trying to update Windows at the same time. Yeah. Now, instead of using my one event, I'm going to disconnect that, press the alt and drag one up here and drag RPC custom event back here. <coughs> With RPC change material one selected, go over here to details and there should be a replicate in details. Currently it is not replicated. Surprise. We want this to instead run on the server. Now we'll, we'll talk about multicast and run on owning client later. Right now we want RPC change material underscore one to run on the server, not the client. I hold down the alt key and then click on it. Alt click will disconnect a note. Now from my number one, I'm going to do a pressed and I want to call the RPC that I just created. RPC change material one. Now when I press one, it's going to call this RPC change material one and that will do our update. It will call to the server to do the information that we need done. We'll save, compile, Go back to our level and hit, I'm going to pull this over again, hit run and click inside one of them and hit the one key 
and it immediately updated on my remote, but it did not update on my client, the, my actually active client. Yes, that's exactly what it's doing. It's only replicating to everybody else. There we go. Reliable does both. But as needed, yes. Click reliable. Reliable sends it back to the point of origin. In class activity, create a second set of change material. But if I press the number two, it changes the, the that client's character to a different material. There we go. And we can comment on this. Change color. Ooh, let's get fancy. Let's start British. One. Never. <laughs> Never. No. Don't fully, don't fully spell armor with you. It's still confuses me to the statement Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> Let's stay focused on multiplayer. Create a second set, and actually creating a second caller is just selecting, duplicating, and then change this to number two. And we, we do need to rename these. Create new names for these. Maybe easiest to just delete them and create a new one. And set the second or pressing number two to a different color. Now save file. In theory, this should now work. Run. And I can select one of them, press two. And yes, my shaders are still compiling. The other one, press one, and they should look different. And it is updating between the two servers. Because on, on the second one, I have it set to element one of the, the materials instead of element zero. Element zero is apparently the body, and element one is the clothing. Now you know how to replicate something between the client and the server.